Mortimer Forest. Uh, initially, yeah. I've right. seen a picture straight away. Yeah, you see yeah, the pictures. Well, <laughs> look at that copse of trees and that one. I haven't finished my intro. I haven't oh, finished sorry. my uh, my really pompous intro. <laughs> Wait, go back. <laughs> um, Mortimer Forest. Let me finish. Mortimer Forest, originally a royal chase, deer hunting. Most of this is parted in the 20s by the Forestry Commission or whatever they were called back then. So this is again one of those situations of kind of things that appear natural but aren't, but have become semi-natural. Nature has had its mark on it and imprint, and especially in conditions like this. Whoop! Oh yes, I see what you mean. Oh, that's falling over. That's yeah. lovely. So what caught my eye was this lovely little sapling coming out. And actually here, the lovely thing about this is the horizon line is quite high. Yeah. So there's a lot of narrative when the tree, when the trees on the on the journey up as well, and also. For me, this is perfect foreground. I just love this. Um, I love this kind of foreground. Yeah. It just, it's very English and very... Uh... It, it, it is, and, and it's actually really, it, it, it's functional as well. It, it, it's, it's adding colour. Mm. Uh, and I'm not, I don't mean in itself, but it's bouncing colour back up into the mist. Yeah. Um, so so there isn't a, there is, there's going to be a transition in that mist. Um, I, I'm going to see it. You can see it as, as really, really blue in the back of the camera, but there's that because of the, the gold coming off of the bracken on the ground, um, and you can really see it in the back of the camera. Mm. It's just lovely. These greens are popping, really popping. Yeah, and they're glistening as well, because yes. it's a moist kind of clag covering that we've got. See, look at that. Look at the mixture of tones yeah. through there with that. Yeah. Side little birch. Beautiful, isn't it? It's actually quite a nice thing about this time of year is the ferns aren't, aren't as high in the summer. They're sort of two meter high, yeah. kind of impenetrable ferns. But look at that. Oh yeah. It's just spectacular. Part of the reason I like that so much is, you, is you've got that big old oak tree in the background yeah that's that's providing that is very very nice indeed yeah and we're not in autumn either we're not in the kind of peak time for this sort of stuff I mean crikey that's lovely if you looked at the histogram of or the color palette analysis of this this kind of scene it's very flat. Yeah. I mean, colour wise, it's very subtle, very, I mean, in a grander sense, it's quite unremarkable, you'd think, but it's, um, there's a minimal aspect to it, but it also, that minimal colour palette really brings forward the structural elements of the scene, you know, so the composition sort of sticks better, I think. A lot of people get stuck on light mm. and actually you don't have to have, I mean, this is great light because, yeah. because it helps you find great compositions. Mm. Um, it, it changes the way you, you changes what you're looking for yeah. in an image, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of these trees look like something out of a Dr. Seuss book. Yeah. You know, they're really, that really gnarled birch there. Um, it looks just like something out of, um, green eggs and ham, if you know yeah, that yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I mean, that's majestic as well. That birch that's reaching right up there. Look at yeah, that. yeah. Isn't that lovely? That's a, have you checked out this guy called Henry Prestes? No. It's very like that. It's, it's, it's sort of, a, it's not really a landscape guy, but he's a, he does these very cinematic, misty kind of shots of towns and, and like things. And occasionally we'll use a prop or a person. Right. Um, but it's that kind of thing, big and like very kind of ethereal and evocative. That that there, for me, is a very Henry Presto type of shot. The things, everything's accentuated when the conditions are like this, but in particular, 
the kind of interplay between trees. And the, because you've almost, with the clag and the mist, you've got another depth of field element that's going on as well as your optical depth, depth of field. Yeah. So you have almost like a timeline. You've got the things in the immediate foreground that are now and then things in the future in the background and branches reaching over and interacting with, with other trees. And it's very easy to anthropomorphize. I don't, I'm not sure if that's the right word when we're talking about plants, but uh, it's quite easy when you see scenes like this to anthropomorphize and make narratives in your mind about the kind of things, the conversations that are occurring. I think like successful woodland images always have that. They always have a, a storytelling element to them. Definitely, yeah, yeah. I've sort of resigned now to the last thing I want to so it's, it's different when I'm in the woods the last thing I want to get is stressed yeah so I just put on a single lens and then and just kind of that's it the decision's made and then unless I see something extraordinary that needs a wide angle lens then I'll just leave this thing on yeah and just one of the I think the great thing advantages we have over photographers 20 30 years ago is when you capture a shot, you can then capture two or three around that shot just to make sure. Yes. Because invariably, something I suffer with quite a lot is uh, just using one eye in the viewfinder as I tend to miss vital context out in the foreground or slightly off to the right or left. Yeah. And just being able to capture that very quickly and easily with a couple of extra shots is, uh, I've never regretted it. <laughs> No, it's the thing I, um, I think the thing I, reg I, I, when I look back at shooting with film and you've got no, no immediate feedback on your, on your mm. image is that, you know, there are a lot of occasions where you get back and you go, oh, I just, there's just that subtle change yeah. I could have made and, and you can't, you know, you can't go back, but here you can, mm. you can, you can just stand and analyze your image and then re yeah. reshoot it. Relevant to what I was saying a minute ago is that you've got this, um, Oh, wait a minute. That's a lot. What's that? <laughs> what <on earth> is that? <laughs> I can see such a long way. Thinking... <laughs> You're looking at spy satellites, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. um, when it is this sort of, it is relevant to what I was saying a minute ago in that you've got this really nice chronology here. You've got that kind of young sapling. You've got something dead in the foreground. And you've got this massive yeah. oak tree in the far ground that's We've got out the car and probably not walked more than 100 paces, 150 paces from the car. And all we've done is circle in this very small area. Yeah. Um, yeah. You notice it's gone a bit dirtier now, isn't it? A little bit yeah. heavier. Yeah. A bit more moist. Everything's gone a bit kind of green and grey. I absolutely love the way that branch comes out and circles around. You see in the back, it creates a little, a little circle around yeah. the top of that frame. Hmm. So I think the luminosity of some of these greens, you've got this general murkiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got this general murky kind of feel to it right now, but then the, it's almost as though the air around the mossy trees is clearer. Mm. Um, yeah. So they, so there's a clarity there that isn't everywhere else. It's, yeah. uh, Mm. These birds oh. this time of year are phenomenal, aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely glorious. Look at that. I think what makes these, what makes a, an image, a woodland image successful for me in, in these kinds of conditions is the way that something pristine can reconcile something very chaotic. Yeah. So you can have loads of branches, loads of color, loads of chaos, and then a pristine sapling or a beautiful, elegant oak branch, or the way that some young, you know, like a, a branch can come out of something or a new growth or something, some element that reconciles the two, the two things.
the spacing in this forest is amazing. But it never stops. It no, always draws no, you in because there's yeah. always something beyond. Oh. Do you know when it's... Phenomenal. Phenomenal. If I go a bit further, we might have to... And it's all about trying to isolate things at this stage, isn't it? Like you yeah. get things so that they... But actually, yeah. Uh... We spoke, spoke about this on the... And a previous, yeah. I think a nice, I think something nice and and kind of wide of this actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. That's one of the advantages of mist conditions like this is that yeah. it sort of eliminates the human element again. Maybe that's part of the reason the merit of it is these natural elements take over, even temporarily. You know, that's one of the kind of anomalies I've had in like my small amount of time I've been doing photography is. When you talk to idiots, they usually tell you that you have to have some sort of human, something for scale in the yeah. or some human element. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's the antithesis of what I'm trying to achieve. <laughs> it's like the more of that I can remove, the better. I, I, I sort of draw the line at maybe with, with a path, maybe sometimes paths are quite nice. But yeah, can you imagine having a human in this? Good grief. Talk about removing the suspension of disbelief. It's got a timeless quality to it when it's like this, isn't it? It's sort of everything standing still, you know? Yeah. Things when wind's there and moving stuff and you have dyna dynamic elements to pictures, it is very much, a, a, you know, there's movement and kind of movement forward or movement backwards. But with this, everything's static. You know, you're having a cross section of, you're seeing a cross section of something at a moment in time. Yeah, I mean, this is something nice about this time of year is you've got all of, effectively the autumn colour palette on the ground, plus the new growth, plus the moss, the winter moss, but you haven't got any in the tree, so you're only seeing the structural elements of the trees, which, as much as autumn is amazing, you don't get to see that so much because it's all about colour. It's even more spaced out up here. And again, it's there's some lovely elements like that fallen yeah. upper section. Um, so many compositions. Oh, I know. And it, I love the way that some of them are darker than others, you know, just with like, just with the distance that gives you the, that change in contrast. As you say, that every now and then there's one even in the distance that's darker. It, yeah. just, it doesn't seem to make it's sense with how- a bit. You got this, Oh, perfect. You've got a tree on the on the left with a branch falling down. And you've got a tree on the right. And look at the way they're interacting. It's absolutely lovely. Look at that through there. Really nice. It just does enough to uh, split the image up a bit. Yeah, there's a splash of colour in everything. And I think um, the moment it is all coming from the ground. You've either got the mosses or you've got the, the dead bracken. Yeah. Um, so you've got lots of lots of gold and lots of really fresh green. Um, yeah. Oh yes. Oh, that's fucking lovely. That's delicious. I'm gonna have to do a. I'm gonna have to stack there. Join those together though, I think. A typical oak tree that I've seen has got pretty big branches low down, and these don't seem to have that, mm. so they're behaving like beech trees. Let's just talk a bit about um, weather forecasting, because I think like <laughs> it does seem to be the weather forecast. I've always sort of told people from my amateur point of view anyway that it's uh, outdoor photography is like 95% weather forecasting and then 5% technique and gear really because it you see this days in days out we could have you know you could forecast this and from that point onwards you end up planning the day planning the planning where you're going to go yeah and then preparing for that in your mind and visualizing compositions and various things 
so much emphasis on gear and technique and I think like I've sort of dabbled in portrait photography here and there and I realise just how much more technical and complex that is than landscape photography. Um, especially with a workflow, you have a woodland workflow or you have a, you know, a classic landscape, open landscape type of workflow. And they, yeah, it's very surprising that you vary from that, yeah. you know. Um, Good landscape photographers, they're experts in geology, experts in arboriculture, experts in, I say experts, in inverted commas, but experts in uh, forecasting, meteorology, experts in historical elements to do with things as well. And it's, it's sort of much of the skill, skill of landscape photography it seems to me to be more about, more in that kind of sector rather than I think you're right. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a, yes, an understanding of of subject, and uh, and maybe an ability to to um, get that message, get that information across in an image. Mm. Um, that that's beautiful as well. So it's not you know it's not just a a, a record or a fact. It's something that, that goes beyond that. Yeah. But it's um, you know what the the successful images from this place will be the ones that absolutely sum the the environment up here and yeah. and give it a sense of history and uh, yeah. time that's just beautiful this is this arrangement of trees i've been looking at this for years yeah <laughs> every time i come across it it's it's the same it's like something that just really yeah. works nicely i think it's that's just it's just Fucking beautiful. Yeah. I'd like, I'm struggling to find superlatives. Yeah. So I just resort to swearing, but. I quite like these little almost silhouetted saplings in the foreground. Mm. <clears throat> because the question in your head is what if yeah. I turn that corner? What's around there? What if I take three steps to the left? Mm. You know. Um yeah. And ultimately, that's what you know. You don't want to be pointed at a, a picture that someone else has taken. You want to go and find your own. Yeah. 